Jesus. Battle thing, something I came up with, and then I discovered cash do the same thing. Well, I had the studio space for about three years, and there was nothing in here. And then I kind of needed everything done in one room, so I made all this like steel framework stuff for a, make a second floor for a, electronics and stuff like that, and then used it basically to run all the utility airlines, electric stuff, everything in the air so it didn't kind of like trip over on the floor. I built this, all this second floor steel stuff and then I did some Chinese things using a twisted wire to hold the, the cables together. So it's a sort of combination of Chinese and old fashioned sort of British engineering ideas put together in this sort of ad hoc manner. But this is something I, I kind of wanted for ages and I couldn't find anything that did it. There was just like um, a kind of drilling station that works like a table. So I tried to develop my other uh, workshop equipment that's all, all one metre wide and then you can fit two in a truck or a shipping container when you have to move the studio so you can everything's kind of roughly the same size. I got a, a crap cheap kind of pillar drill thing you'd have in your garage but then I rebuilt it and you can attach it on here move it but then this is a this is just like a, a drill press but you can move it and then you can also use it to polish things. Some, something like this I make on the milling machine just out of a piece of scrap uh, metal and I polish it out on here and you get no marks or anything so you can you know you nearly get like a sort of professional finished thing just from a piece of junk just by uh, doing the right steps and it's very easy. I bought a threading arm and it didn't work and then I built this electric one so it's forward backwards it's kind of automatic basically. So you can put threads in things perfectly and very, very quickly. And then you can clean them. And then I have like cleaning compressed air. This does hand threading. It'll always be straight because it's on this thing. You can thread. If you want to make like a camera part, something like that, do it on that. And then here, this is like So like all those silly Darts and air, air blade things, this does the same thing, it costs nothing. So I try and keep all the things that are related to this activity here, all the things that are related to that there. Um, I don't put tools away, tools stay where they work. Yeah, these are all Japanese. I found the best way to do make stuff here is use Chinese muscle like the big part of the thing because the steel's cheap and then the very important part get the super high quality Japanese threading thing or whatever it is drill bit anything like that it's just a super cheap uh, milling machine but yeah I, I built the base for it and then I kind of souped it up a bit put um yeah put like auto feed and things like that and then uh, you know, put like screens on it, and then it's got this like vacuum cleaner thing. So I got a, I got a normal vacuum cleaner and made this um, this thing. It's pretty handy. The main problem Dyson hasn't figured out is that you want to turn the vacuum on where where you do the vacuuming. So, I 
just think that's a huge breakthrough. <laughs> this is just a, a granite surface plate. Say you want to make this and find out whether it's square, you can just do that. Or, you know, if something's flat, and then you can see if it if it jumps up and down. So it's very, very useful. But uh, they they delivered it and they chipped it, so we ended up getting it for free. I guess in the UK this would cost about 300 quid. I had some electromagnets lying around left over, and then I just sort of like put these things together, so you can you can hold things. Say you want to like grind this. Something like this is a very awkward shape, so you can you can um, you can lock it at any angle actually, just using electromagnets. Yeah, basically for free, just because I, I had it lying about. So if you you make uh, weird things like this, you need strange ways to hold them. So this was a this is a very big Allen key. I thought it'd be kind of interesting if you could smooth out the um, the features on it, so it, it kind of rounds out. I made some sculptures like this before. This station here, I can do like sanding with these uh, die grinders, and you can fix edges and holes and all sorts of things like that. Get things perfectly flat. This has magnetic chucking, so you can get your part like this. You just put it on here and you lock it, and then you can deburr your part. So yeah, it works great, saves saves hours. It, this is like a bigger version of like a grinding arm, but I use it to grind, get things flat, like grind welding off. So you have this kind of nasty angle grinder, but it because it's on this arm thing, it always holds it exactly straight and then you can put a little thing on it like that or you can put a great big thing on it like that and you can see what's happening there. It rips through metal like anything. Um, gets it perfectly flat and then when you paint it, you can't see anything. The, the only thing I bought was this, this solid steel part here and then I already had all these parts lying around. So you can, you can make it garden down, it's really, really rigid. So it kind of solved a problem I've been encountering for years. With this you can get it dead flat every time. I've made these tables, uh, these welding tables. So they're kind of um, modular. You can fit things in them, you clamp things down, you can kind of like move things around and do all kinds of stuff with it actually. I realised I couldn't lift things on it so I, I made this little jib crane thing. Yeah, I found the piece of steel um, and looked at the designs and proportions from manufacturer ones you can buy and then just sort of followed that. I did weld it directly onto that column which is a bit strange. So I, I don't lift anything really heavy on it but it's very useful if you want to take something off and not damage it or You've only got two people or one person, you can't get something heavier. You can kind of use it as an aid or if you want to like move something over a little bit, it's extremely useful. A lot, a lot of this stuff in China is incredibly cheap. It's not like um, modifying a Lamborghini or something. Parts that you can't find, I'll just make them if I have to. Or you just modify a part, so something like this. This drill thing. So you can buy these big ones like this, but I, I had this like magnet and then I just realised you can just clamp on like that, so it's kind of pretty useful if you want to drill. You know, you want to like drill something, you can just clamp on. Nothing like super high tech, it's kind of like things that help help you get it done. In China they have these exercise machines everywhere and I made some that powered a street light so this is one of the, the last prototypes but it came back from uh, Guangzhou in the south of China and it, it kind of went through a couple of typhoons so it's a bit damaged um, so I'm doing some repairs modifying it building a new gear system and then it'll get repainted and hopefully sent somewhere 
This particular project um, is awaiting to be sent out to get painted, sandblasted and painted and then get the last bits of electrics stuck in it. It has a, a simple fan and then it has a very powerful strobe light that syncs to the rotation of the fan. Um, very simple idea, you get blasted with air, uh, your body tells you one thing, your eye tells you another, the eye, your eye tells you the, the fan's not moving, you know, the old things that you see in a wagon wheel effect, all that stuff, but it kind of just does a sort of sensory uh, play with your perception. Yeah, I'm finally getting closer to finishing this thing. The, the bottom parts of it had some pretty bad flood damage, so I'm going to get them repainted. It just uh, has a sort of frame thing, but these has two of these hexagonal compartments on top. They have like a conventional 1 inch, 18 inch driver and speaker compartment, but they have these um, audio sort of uh, microphone oscillator type thing. Picks up sound in the space and then turns it into sort of bits. So you have two, the, the, the sound comes out of the speaker, echoes around the room, gets regurgitated, and so it goes, it just keeps going, and it kind of is a self-perpetuating sonic entity. On the front here, it's gonna have a really nice uh, carbon fiber-like CNC cut thing, so it's just very uh, sort of minimal. This will all get powder coated. So I use the machinery I've made to like grind these all down, get them all nice and flat. So you can't see sort of my hand in it. My artworks usually like you can either really see my hand in it or it's more like a factory made it. These are made out of uh, bits of rebar in the hardware market. <laughs> I know just to get it uh, to get it all straight, yeah, use, use that cutting arm, the grinding arm. So you've got this sort of like chaotic thing with a flat feature cut off a certain, certain point. <laughs> 